uh, the game coming up and uh, uh, any other things you'd like to talk about? Yeah, uh, another, you know, opportunity for us uh, to get better. And, you know, obviously Percy gave me that stat the other day about um, our, you know, back to back games. And so I think this will be a good step for us to um, hone in on the things that we need to hone in on, focus on um, rebounding, focus on um, moving the ball in the office of in, and hopefully we can put together a, a good 40 minute effort and team effort at that. All right, thanks, Coach. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up. Doug Feinberg, go ahead and kick us off today. Hey, Coach, good to see you. Good to see you, Doug. So I'm curious. I mean, this sort of a new thing of having these back-to-back -back games against the same opponent, kind of like playoff-ish in that sense of playing same team twice in a row. So when you watch film of the game the other night, do you look for adjustments you can make or things you might think they may do to sort of counter you guys since you had a relatively easier time in that first game? Right. You know, that's the balance um, to understand that we were successful in some things, but also they will be successful in other things that they weren't successful in the other night. So taking a look at film, um, understanding the adjustments that we made throughout the game and knowing that they will game plan for that, but also having some adjustments in our back pocket um, to kind of counter that. It becomes a chess match essentially because um, you don't want to overthink it, but you also want to plan accordingly. Um, not get too high on what we did the other night we did some great things but also we can improve in some areas so yeah I mean that becomes a challenge within these back-to-back -back games because it's you know you have a short amount, amount of time to adjust um, and it's kind of like rolling the dice um, but at the end of the day I think the the biggest thing that we can do is just focus on us um, and hopefully they can they have to adjust to what we do. And just to follow up as, as a younger coach in this league I know you've been an assistant for a couple of years but does this help you, you think, prepare for the playoffs, saying having the quick turnaround against the same team, something that you'll potentially face in, in the playoffs or you saw in the past when you guys were, were winning titles and such? Yeah, for sure. You know, obviously within a season, you want to go through things that you can potentially um, face at the end of the season, whether it's the close games, whether it's the overtime games and, and what you're alluding to now, the back to back games. And it does it gives a play, playoff atmosphere um, to, you know, play these multiple games against the same opponent. And for me, you're right, that that preparation and that experience in that um, early on within the season is going going to be vital information for me heading into hopefully postseason and um, beyond. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's twofold, right? It, it, it is, it does help us in the moment to get better as a team, but I don't like to look too much future wise, but it is good preparation for what me, what we may potentially see. Thanks coach. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks Doug. Uh, Jeff Brown, go ahead, Jeff. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so kind of touching on that as well, what Doug is talking about. So like when you win a game by 20 plus points, is it more difficult to like find the adjustments that you need to make? Because obviously like if you're losing by that, you're like, okay, well we can fix this and change this. But when you win by that much, you know, like I guess how difficult is it to, to figure out what adjustments need to be made? Yeah, very difficult because you understand that the opponent is going to adjust to what we were successful at. And so the key is, you know, to always, you know, to adjust to the adjustment, but you don't know what that will be essentially into the, the game starts. And that's, that becomes a challenge. Um, and so, you know, we have a great staff, obviously amazing players and talking through with what we see within the first possessions um, becomes, you know, our chess match within that. And then I know even when uh, Coach Dan was in charge, rebounding was kind of a big concern for you guys, but you guys are actually, I believe, fourth in the league as far as rebounds per game. So, you know, that's pretty good. Um, but then in, in the 10 games, you've you've out-rebounded teams in five of those games and then been out-rebounded in, in five. So I guess how much of a concern do you think it is? It's a big concern. You know, in our losses, we were also out-rebounded. And I think, you know, it 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 is – important to know that our defense um, is vulnerable at times, whether, you know, we're trapping or whether we're in a zone. 
Um, and, and so it becomes a matter of everybody boxing out, maybe our guards on post players, um, our guards have to come back and get a couple of more. Um, but I think the offensive rebounds are what's kind of killing us and, and what's deflating. Um, the, um, the offense allows teams to get second chance points, um, you know, and especially if teams aren't shooting it at a high clip, there's more rebounds available. And um, for us, you know, knock on wood we've been shooting it pretty decently so there are not a, a lot of o boards to go get we're not really getting a lot of o boards um but i mean if you look at us statistically honestly 2020 and 2018 winning i don't you don't call me on it but i'm not sure how our rebounding was and that's always kind of been um our achilles heel sort of sort of so, so to speak um but you know <laughs> I wish you could see my board today. <laughs> Rebounding is important and it's highlighted <laughs> on the board. A couple of underlines as well under there. Yeah, yes. Cap <laughs> caps and all that red <laughs> marker. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Um, and then I guess uh, just last one for me, uh, do the keys to the game differ uh, from, from the game on uh, what Wednesday? Yeah, I think, you know, the obviously statistically remains the same. Um, Atlanta fouls a lot. So getting to the free th throw line is going to be huge. Um, they pressure, they they turn you over a lot. So poised with the ball, um, keeping our turnovers low. Obviously, we talked about rebounding already. Um, they're not very good in transition. Um, they're not a good, they don't match up well. So getting our easy transition points and getting our flow will be key. But I think another to another layer to that is just to, you know, to lock in on this mentality that, um, you know, this is our second game, a back-to-back, -back, so to speak, um, and we haven't been successful. Um, and so what's our mentality has to um, be that we have to come out and, you know, punch first and have this dog-like mentality so that we can get through this um, uh, I don't want to say it's a mental block because it's not a mental block quite yet. I think this challenge, get through this challenge mm -hmm. of um, just uh, getting another road win, uh, a back-to-back -back win. Awesome. Thank you, coach. No problem. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Percy, go ahead, Percy. Awesome, Jeff. Hey, it, it, you know, it sounds almost as if you have to kind of like be greedy, I guess, you know, like when, you know, like when you're, a playoff team and you're on the road like you're just kind of happy to get that split but it sounds as if like you know it feels like you have to say no we can't be happy just to get that split we need to be greedy and go for two yeah, we, it's, it's, we talk, I talk about it before. It's a sustained level of excellence at all times and um, being committed to just, you know, un understanding that we're at a good spot, but not complacent in that. We have a ways to go and we want to continue to peak at the right time. And within that, challenges like this arise. It doesn't matter. Like you're saying, a split isn't good enough. You know, um, to maintain that uh, level of excellence, we have to come in here with the mindset of we're trying to get this win. And it's important for us to do that um, in our growth as a team together. Hey, and then just in like four of the last like five games, you, you guys have held teams under eight, 87 points. Are you seeing a growth on the defensive end that wasn't there at the beginning of the season? Definitely. And a lot of that you guys know is just training camp and reps and having time to practice. And now we are going, we're having to get better and gain that chemistry through games. Um, and what we're seeing is what this particular team with this, these particular players can do on the defensive end. It may not look like what we've done in previous years, but what's going to benefit and be you know, most effective for us. It's our length. Um, it's our ability to be smart and, um, you know, fly around and get some steals in that manner. But also, like you guys are saying, we can change up to a zone now. Um, and so it's just a matter of finding our sweet spot defensively. And it's okay if it doesn't look like teams of the past, but if it looks um, legit for this squad, then that's what, we, what it will be. Hey, and then just the last thing from like me here. Um, how are you treating Kiana Williams this this year um obviously she's not getting a lot of minutes but it seems in some ways it's kind of like a red shirt season for her so um just uh what what types of things are you doing with her to maybe get her up to speed for perhaps not this year but maybe in the future yeah, I mean, I, I try to connect with her every game day, every shoot around to see what she knows about the opponent, 
to study it, to know that, um, you know, at, at on the professional level, um, it's not enough to kind of just, you know, play. It's a it's a mental game. It's mental strategy as well. And so I, I quiz her kind of every time I, I, you know, we get our shoot around like, OK, what's Atlanta good at? What's what are their deficiencies and um, who do we have to look out for? And so she's been a good uh, been very good at, at staying engaged and staying involved in that. And obviously having um, Sue here and Jordan here for her to just learn from it it'll be it's huge it's valuable valuable experience for her though she's not getting it on the floor right now she's getting it in other ways um, with preparation and practice um, just with who she's around and obviously she works so hard and um, you know hopefully there'll be some chances for her to get out there and just put it all together but uh, until then she's done an amazing job of remaining professional and just continue to grow and learn um, from that spot. Hey, um, how exciting will it be for her and and even for the team to get that like first point, you know, to get her first point? <laughs> we were t- <laughs> we were trying the other day. <laughs> I don't know if you guys pay attention to that. You know, we noticed that everyone had a point, you know, and so we were trying to get her to go go get a bucket, which she can do. She showed that she's so capable of scoring, but also distributing. So, you know, hopefully it's, it'll come for her, come real soon. She's working toward it. She's working super hard on, on our practices and off days and things of that nature. So she's preparing. All right. All right, Coach. Thank you. All right, thanks. It. No problem. Thanks, Coach. All right, we'll see everybody after the game.